After some time spent behind bars, in part because of that chain snatching incident we mentioned earlier, on December the 11th, 2020, Dougie B would make his musical comeback, releasing the fresh home track No More Free Dougie B alongside Shah EK and K Flock. And make no mistake, this track was a straight gang banging anthem, with Dougie B saying that him and K Flock spin with two guns to shoot. Shah EK says that he will kill anybody dropping the O, by which he means flipping the OG's hand sign upside down to show disrespect. He says that he smokes Woo Lottie, and K Flock ends out the song saying that he kills for no reason. This track really set the tone, with a lot of disrespect going back and forth between these songs. But once again, escalation of the war of words in the music was soon followed by an escalation of violence in the streets. On the 23rd of December, a close friend of K-Flock known as JB, real name James Solano, was standing outside the King Delian Grocery in the Bronx on Boston Road in East 166th Street in Morrisania. While standing here, a man approaches him and taps him on the shoulder. And these two people look familiar with each other. There doesn't appear to be a lot of tension or provocation at this point. However, only a few seconds later, the man who patted him on the shoulder reaches into his coat, producing a pistol and opening fire on JB at close range. This was another terrifying attack caught on video, but once again, way too shocking to show on YouTube. Around a week after JB's murder, a suspect was arrested after being caught by the cops purse snatching. JB was only 16 years old when his life was taken. Yet another tragedy falling on the shoulders of teenage boys who have barely even had a chance to work out their lives yet. But fortunately, even losing their friend JB, this didn't stop his surviving friends from continuing to put their pain on music and progress their careers. Only two days after JB's murder, on Christmas Day 2020, K-Flock and B-Love would release their latest song, Speed Racing, a track all about spinning on ops after taking Xanax and leaving them running away like speed racers. The track also contains similar lyrics about shooting YGs or gunners and killing anyone bunny hopping, as well as lyrics about shooting anyone that throws up YG's hand signs. Slowly but surely, K Flock and B Love's plan was working and their music was on the rise off of the back of their vicious beef in the streets with the YGs and D Thang. But moving into 2021, we would see that beef be playing out on social media more and more. As we get into the new year of 2021, Bronx Drill fans would see D Thang and K Flock hopping on Instagram Live together and arguing about who has the best lean and smoke. You never had this. This is that mud! This is that mud! This that mud! D Thang would go on to prod his op, referencing their earlier song, saying that there's no more free Dougie B because he'll soon be RIP and the YGs are going to take his life. No more free Dougie B. I'm cool like that. What am I? What am I? I'm gonna stop talking like that. What am I done? Gangster, gangster. Gangster, I'm gonna go attack him. I ain't gonna attack him, Dougie B. Now, not long after this, K Flock would be seen on live, apparently spinning through his ops block once again, the 800 YG's turf. And from here, we would see a reckless K Flock acting wild on live, riding around his enemy's hood, screaming at them not to run out of a window. Run, don't run, like, don't run, don't run. Seemingly, K Flock would eventually catch someone, dissing them from out the window, and even telling the driver to use the car to run them over. That was good. Oh, wow. It was gunner. It was gunner. Oh, why? What? Oh, why? I slapped the shit out you. Tell them why. Tell them 800 niggas that suck my dick. You heard? Hey, yo, you heard? Tell them 800 niggas that suck my dick. Don't run. Don't run. Go, 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 go. Go, hit him. Hit him with the whip. Hit him with the whip. After losing their supposed op in a brief chase, K Flock then claims that they're still on the block and they're not leaving. You still on a strip, though. Yeah, I got my jacket. Man, we're not leaving. Where am I dad? We're not leaving. K Flock would continue spinning that block for a couple of minutes, seemingly catching someone again, jumping straight out of the car with his friends yelling Flock'em, and doing all of this whilst wearing an expensive Montclair jacket and diamond encrusted necklace. He right, he right there, he right there, he right there. Where, where? He right there. Don't run! Don't run! Don't run. Yo, Flock it, Daddy, Flock him! Flock him! Hey, buddy. Yo, bro, how about this? How about this? Yo, bro, get back in the car. Yeah, go. Yo, bro, hurry, also, come back around. But once again, he failed to catch his op, but would go on to assure the fans if they did get him, they would have killed him and put him in the trunk. If I would have caught him, it'd have been fire. We would have caught him, we'd have been dead. We would have really been in the trunk. Where's my dad? He would have been yelling. I don't give a f. 
We'd have put him in the trunk for real though. Now, funnily enough, we never actually get to see Kate do anything illegal or actually catch anyone in these lives. And there's a small part of me that believes that riding around staging this sort of thing would be the perfect marketing strategy for an up and coming drill rapper to cultivate a tough guy image. But whether or not he's doing this for the camera or is just genuinely bloodthirsty, you can't deny that the way that Kate Flock is behaving in these lives is completely out of control and extremely alarming. It's clear at this point that despite his promising rap career, he's truly on a mission to clash with his ops in the street. And as we now know, it would ultimately be this attitude that would lead to his downfall. But before that could happen, he would be releasing a lot more music. 